Hey Manic fam, voiceover Mad Dog here. The long-awaited Victor Nikiforov pair skate work log is finally here. Anyway, the anime Boston Crunch is real and there ain't no time for pleasantries, so we're just gonna jump right into things. I will say though, there's a lot to pattern modification, and I go through things quickly in this video for the sake of covering it all. However, if you have questions, please feel free to ask in the comments and I will do my best to respond to all of you. To start off, I've listed all the materials I use for this process on the screen, minus what I assume to be the obvious things like a sewing machine, thread, scissors, etc. To make this garment, I decided to use an old blouse pattern to show you all some basic pattern modification techniques that you can reuse for many other garments. I chose to work with a fitted blouse pattern because for this technique to work well for this garment, you want to use a pattern that is similar to a basic torso sloper, which is pretty much what a fitted blouse is, with the helpful addition of a collar. For those of you who don't know the slightest bit about pattern drafting and are like, what the heck is a sloper? Feel free to check the description for a brief write-up. To modify this pattern, I'll be cutting different shapes out of each pattern piece to basically make mini patterns that are specific to Victor's design, which I've laid out here. Those mini pattern pieces will then be sewn together to create the same shape of the original pattern piece, and from there you can just sew it like the normal blouse itself. It's a pretty simple technique so long as you account for seam allowance, which is why I decided to film this as my first sewing work log instead of something overly complex. And speaking of cutting mini patterns, here's our first modification, adding the black stripe to the front of the shirt. To get rid of a section of white here and add in the black stripe, I folded the pattern to create the new mini white panel. I had to leave room for seam allowance, of course, but now that the white section was smaller, I could create another mini panel out of my black fabric later on that would fill out the rest of the front shape. That way, when they're sewn together, they will take the shape of the regular blouse front pattern. Then I get some pinning done and I'm on to modification number two, reshaping the yoke so that it's more like the one in the show. Once again, I have to do this taking into consideration seam allowance. And this time, the back panel of the pattern that the yoke will be sewn to, because that will need to be adjusted as well, as you'll see me do later on. Just a quick tip, don't forget about your notches when cutting, especially when modifying patterns, because they can and will save your life. And now we're on to cutting and pinning, but this time with a black broadcloth. Until that is the doge tries to help. Then things just become a mess. Then she gets bored though, and we can get back on track. Whoa, look, here I am adjusting the front black section so that it matches up with the front white panel. After that, we gotta pin the heck out of everything. And I know I've said it before, but this is where I will be pinning my modified pattern pieces together so that when they're sewn, they will fully resemble the original pattern pieces. And then of course, I will be pinning those fuller pieces together and sewing them up like the regular blouse, just like my blouse pattern instructions tell me to do. Now. I'm a fool, so of course I sewed it in an order that was all over the place and had nothing to do with my instructions, but I don't recommend doing that. So for your convenience, I reorganized this vlog a bit so that you can see all the shirt progress, then all the jacket progress, and then the final steps. But fair warning, the footage is out of chronological order, and if you're confused on the order of the steps after watching this whole video for whatever reason, Try to remember these generic steps to sewing a torso. Darts first, then main seams like side and shoulder seams, and then secondary seams like the sleeves. And now I'm finally on to sewing. I don't intend to narrate how to do every step of my sewing for two reasons. The first being, whatever blouse pattern you get will have instructions, so as long as you sew the modified pieces together correctly, you can follow the blouse's instructions from there. And second, the video would be atrociously long, and it's supposed to be more about initial pattern modification than the actual sewing of the garment itself. That being said, I also know that as of right now, I do not have a sewing basics video. And although I do intend to make one at some point or another, depending on when you watch this video, I may have already made it, I will regardless leave a card here to some video, mine or someone else's, that shows some basic sewing techniques. 
So I hope that that helps all of you beginner sewers. While I slowly sew everything together, I feel I should also mention that although I have no footage of me ironing my fabric, please be sure to do that. It will make your costume so much more crisp. And now that the shirt portion of this garment is done, we're gonna move on to the jacket portion. First comes, of course, the good old pinning and cutting and pinning some more. And here's another example of me modifying the pattern. This time I'm just omitting a shape here because I will be recreating it in another type of fabric. So long as I include seam allowance when cutting, I can sew the two pieces together and I will still get the same overall shape of the front panel. And pinning and cutting and pinning and cutting and pinning and cutting. And hey, look, here I am folding up the other side to recreate the shape that I omitted from the front panel before. Although I'm not narrating every step of my sewing, I do want to specify that when I'm sewing the organza, I do use French seams. Now for the tails, we are gonna create a shape in a little bit of a different way than we've been doing for all the other pattern modifications. Instead of cutting shapes within shapes, we're just gonna add a bit to the end of the back pattern. As you can see here, I just add a triangle onto the bottom of the back pattern. And this is the easiest of the pattern modifications we do, so in all honesty, you can probably totally wing this and have it come out okay. Just remember to account for the rolled hem on the tails itself and the fact that they'll be sewn into the front via the side seams. I unfortunately lost some of my footage of the organza jacket process, including that of me attaching the front black panel to the main purple section. But all I did was use a simple applique technique. And when I did that, I didn't worry about how the stitching looked because as you can see here, I'm covering the edges with a bit of pretty black cord. This adds both artistic flair to the garment and makes it a lot easier to deal with attaching the front panel. Here, I'm creating little tubes out of rectangles to make the shape at the bottom of the sleeve before it becomes like the weird glove, if that makes any sense. Well, if you know the design, it should. Unfortunately, I lost all of my footage of the glove creation as well, but to explain simply, the glove is just my arms traced onto a double layer of spandex and then sewn at the tracing line. If you've ever made gloves for cosplay in a pinch, you'll probably already know this technique. After that was done, I sewed the glove to the sleeve, and then after that, I hand sewed the little tube on top of that to hide the seam. And lastly for sewing comes the collar. You want to make this out of black fabric, just like the normal collar that will probably come in your blouse pattern. The only thing that's different is when it comes time to attach it, you want to attach it to both the shirt and the jacket at once. 
because if both garments are sewn into the collar, it makes it one garment. And that makes it easier to put on and keeps the panels in all of the places that you want them to lay. All I can say with this part is be very careful sewing it on and I highly recommend hand sewing the inside finish. After that, it's time to finalize the garment with silver epaulets and front cords. The front cords are just pieces of cords that I finish the ends with hot glue and attach to buttons. And the epaulets are just some simple braids glued right onto the garment. Like I said at the beginning, if you need any clarification on steps, please feel free to ask questions. It's impossible for me to cover every single step of this process in such a short video, but I am more than happy to take time outside of this video to help explain some trouble spots more thoroughly. So with that, I hope you enjoyed watching me make my Victor Nikiforov cosplay and or learned a little bit about basic pattern modification. And I guess that's about it for now, cause I need to get back to Gun Crunch. Anyway, later Manic Fam, I will see you on the con floor.